supposed to do YouTube videos for each of these lectures so that you know everybody can enjoy them again and again and again, I That's guess. Good. That's so, good. So uh, last week's I downloaded this morning and erased it off of here, so hopefully it'll be there. <laughs> but today's lecture is on clear beta or clear knowing. Uh, many of us have this gift, we just don't listen to it. We don't pay attention to it. And it's, it's a very marvelous gift. It's how we know truth. You know, uh, living in this community of Mormons, they say it's the, the Holy Ghost that talks to us. But it's really our higher self, our higher knowing, our connection to God. And so just know that when people talk about knowing, you know, they just know something. Trust that they, they know for themselves their own truth. And uh, it's very... Uh, very powerful to be in contact with your higher self so you have clear knowing. Uh, the visual body is another name for the astral body. So it's located in the fourth layer of the art field and links us to the astral plane. Now the astral plane, when we experience flying or experience dreams, we're actually astral traveling. And so uh, when you have very vivid, lucid dreams, you're actually experiencing, you know, being in your astral body and in your astral pain, plane. So let's talk a little bit about astral projection. I want to do a visualization technique to help you get into your astral body, the visual body, the fourth layer of the, the, the art field. Uh, this is where the guardian angels are also found is in your astral field because when you're astral traveling they protect your body so nothing else gets in there <laughs> so if you've scared off your your guardian angels be careful that astral travel or at least protect your auric field okay what i want you to do How is can you scare them off? just by doing naughty things or getting into drugs or different things that open you up uh, to other entities and your guardian angels are high vibrating they'll they'll be there but some people actually tell them to get lost it's sad but you know and well, they they do what we command them to do and they the individual refuses to believe that they have that form of protection so therefore it has to be that big struggle that yes right? yeah it's very subtle uh, but your guardian angels help you. They help keep your art filled clean. They help protect you. They help uh, guide you. You know, and uh, it, so it's good to keep them around. <laughs> so anyway, I want you to focus on breathing. Let's take a big deep breath. And then ground yourself down into the earth. By the way, Leah, I was told to tell you to do this four or five times a day. Get yourself grounded down into the earth because a lot of times we'll be out there doing stuff and we get way too far out and we're not grounded. So, okay, now take another deep breath and connect to the heavens. Now I want you to just kind of focus on the rise and fall of your chest while you're breathing in and out and kind of silence your mind. What's neat is a lot of people can do this very quickly, so just breathe in. Focus on your breathing. Now I want you to visualize your body actually being taller than it is. Visualize the entire aura. And your aura actually looks like a body around you. A lot of people visualize this ovoid thing, but it actually goes out from every part of your body and looks just like a larger body. So kind of Focus on having a body about three inches outside of your physical body. This will get you into your astral plane. Now, I want you to bring your attention down to your feet and elongate your body by at least another three inches. So, visualize your body actually getting bigger. Now you visualize your legs dropping down into the earth and relax and 
drop your arms down into the earth also and feel at one with the earth and go deeper and deeper into the earth and breathe. Now we take and bring your attention to your arms and legs and raise your arms and legs so they're parallel to your body. So you see this elongated image rising up above you about six inches and hold it there for a moment. You'll feel a pulling sensation near the second chakra. Don't worry, this is natural. With astral projection, there's a core of energy between the physical body and your astral body, and it comes out just below your belly button. So you may feel a little pulling there, and I'm feeling that right now. Then you drop this elongated body back into your body and return your head and feet to their natu natural position. Now I want you to go ahead and open your eyes. Made me a little dizzy doing that. Did it make you guys dizzy? Yeah. Doing it? That's because you pulled out into your astral body and then you contracted the it back down into your, your uh, physical body. And when you do that, you're pulling all of the astral energy in there. Now the astral plane is the plane where you travel. It's the plane where you gather information. It'll bring truth into your body. It'll bring clear knowing. And that's why we kind of did that. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about things. Uh, about four years ago, I was told to start studying uh, Wiccan and uh, the casting of spells and different things so I'd know how people did that sort of thing so I could undo anything bad that may have been done. Now, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about psychometry because what it is, it's taking an inanimate object and feeling the energy from it and gaining knowledge from it. For instance, one of the things I learned is there's things called talismans. Now, talismans is a object that a person owns or it might even be a lock of their hair. It could be a piece of their skin. It could be their comb. It could be you know, different things that person, their keys, things people have used, and you can touch those things and read into that person. It's very powerful because it's been in contact with their auric field and it has the knowledge of their auric field, their astral plane even. And uh, I had a man who I was supposed to clear and he had been attacked by wizards and witches and different things and I had to know these different things in order to clear him and his energy. And when he come, came in, just contacting his astral field helped me recognize a lot of this stuff. And then I used, uh, you know, I asked him to hold on to a rock for a little bit, and then I used that rock to continue to clear him because he had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of different things that had happened to him, and I needed to clear all that. And to know what I needed to clear, I needed a talisman. <laughs> or an object that had been in his field and had his energy. So psychometry, you can read into different objects. You know, you can actually feel things. Like if uh, when, we, when we buy a pendulum, these pendulums are cleared energy. And when a person buys them, usually I'll tell them, you know, how to put their energy into that so it tells their, them their truth and, and helps them. And the, the gem actually becomes theirs to use and to gain knowledge and to help them connect with the universe. Now, how do you put your energy into it? Uh, you bless it. You tell it uh, what you want it to do, number one. Like if you want a yes to be clockwise, some people have a yes be back and forth. You know, you tell the gem what you want it to do. So when you want a yes answer, you know, you tell it. I, I tell them to go clockwise. When I want a no answer, I have them go counterclockwise. If it doesn't matter, I just have them kind of stay still or go back and forth. And, uh, you know, you, you tell the energy what you want the energy to do, basically, because everything is energy. And our minds control that energy through our intent and our thought. And how we have clear knowing is by attaching to that energy and energy will never lie to us. Energy always tells us the truth. It can't lie to us. 
because its its purpose isn't to lie. The humans are the ones who who have created deception and and uh, lying and those sort of things. And the universe is very truthful to us. It will tell us the truth always. Uh, such as uh, when you start seeing things, it, it's not untrue. The, it's just demonstrating what's there and what we haven't perceived before, but we're perceiving it. And a lot of people go, oh, you can't see that. Oh, that doesn't exist. Well, how do they know? Are they able to see it? Are they able to, to uh, project it or anything like that? You know, and, and there are other things like astral projection uh, you can actually project your body elsewhere and pr put things and thoughts that's why there's a lot of thought forms out there and a lot of them are negative thought forms but who are they created by humans humans the the universe doesn't create these thought forms we do uh, and so every deception in the universe was created by humans so just a just an aside note so um, let's talk a little bit about telepathy and etheric uh, projection. Um, in this aura, the reality of, and the reservoir of thought substance, which can be spiritually used, it's in the mental plane. Now the mental plane uh, is different than the astral plane. And when we go into the mental plane, it's a, it's a magnetic, center of light and knowledge and so it is an area where we can obtain truth also so uh, when you do telepathy you're actually communicating with another intelligent being not necessarily a human being but another intelligent being and telepathy you know a lot of people thought that was reading each other's minds well it's actually reading each other's thoughts because you can actually block people from reading your mind. <laughs> and you can put up a stealth energy to keep them from even reading your energy or your body. And so uh, telepathy is a mutual communication with another intelligent being and through their mental body, uh, through their thoughts and their thought forms. Now remember, people can create uh, thought forms that aren't true or that are deceptive. So uh, when we learn to be clear beta, clear knowing, we can know when somebody's not telling us the truth. And the way that that is done is you tell your intelligence to only receive truth. That way you don't receive false thought forms, things that are untrue. And you can recognize if something isn't true. Uh, what does this have to do with Clairveda? Everything. Because to, to know the truth is Clairveda. To know what really is, is Clairveda. And so the, our universe is filled with so much energy. And in this dualistic world, there's as much truth as there is false. Isn't that an interesting thing? And we created this dualistic universe. And when we pull into unconditional love, unconditional love cannot have negatives or negative energy or negative thought forms or untruths. All it is is love. And Christ came and taught what? Unconditional love or how to know truth. And actually how to not, I mean, he knew when somebody was lying to him through his Clairveda, but he didn't judge it like we do. Because when we judge untruth, we actually feed into the energy because we're taking part in it. And so that's why he said, judge not that you be not judged, is that when we don't feed into that untruth, that we deal with it with just observation and unconditional love, it won't affect us. And we don't produce judgment. I'm wondering, because I know there is Okay. They're put conditions on love, like you just love. <laughs> in 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 love our love. society today, the media 
the movies, everything has made love look like it's sex. But love is not sex. Love is not even emotion. Love is a gift from God. So you're saying that even though it's just love, but like humans put conditions? Yes, if there's it? conditions on it, it's yeah. not really love. Right. Yeah, if there's, if somebody says, I'd, I'd love you if you'd only do this, it's, human it, it's, it's not love. Yeah. It's, a, it's a conditional, it's conditional. Uh, judgment, basically. They want you living a certain way. And if you're in unconditional love, you accept people for who they are, no matter what. And you observe it, and you, you don't make a judgment. You uh, basically just send positive energy to that person and, and unconditional love. Um, love is a thing that humans have lost the ability to understand, most of us. And the reason uh, the light workers came back to this planet to help raise the vibration is the, the whole earth has become such a con clutter of confused energy that we're actually destroying the planet. And who wants to destroy the place they live on? You know, it doesn't make sense. And it, but it's because of the chaos and the confusion that, that uh, it's occurring. And so the light workers came to clear the chaos, to clear the clutter, to clear the, the bodies, to clear the energy so that we can come back into a higher state of being, a, a state of, of unconditional love. And uh, does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> chaos is, is what we've created through all our thought forms and all the negativity and all the duality. Uh, this this uh, universe of ours wasn't always this way. Uh, it wasn't always we didn't always kill each other and hurt each other. We actually existed in a very loving coexistence. And it's been during the last 13,000 some odd years <coughs> of the, the male thought form energy of, of d dominance and war <coughs> and, and slavery. Those kind of thought forms have created this dualistic universe and it, it, it is destroying what we created. And so now the feminine energy is coming in, which is more nurturing, more loving, more kind. And uh, that's the energy we need to come into. Any questions? Um, you said universe, beginning birth, or you, it's the whole the universe? The whole universe really? is involved in this. And that's why, as, as people talk about it, the aliens are even interested in what's happening on this planet. Because this planet, has created so much energy, it's affecting the whole universe. And it's it's the negative energy we've created that's affecting the universe badly. Does that make sense? And so we're, we're creating things that uh, we shouldn't necessarily have. Now, um, this also has some stuff about uh, the third eye, which I'm not gonna talk about because we, we talked about that last week, in, uh, or two weeks ago. Um, let's go on to page uh, five because I'd like to talk a little bit about telepathy in the plant kingdom. The plant kingdom is a perfect kingdom. It's a kingdom of love, of non-judgment. Uh, it's interesting when we went through all of the plants, whenever they would uh, speak to the humans, they would tell us how much they love us and how much they just want us to to love them back. And like the flowers just wanted, they were created for beauty and they just want us to enjoy them. see their beauty and enjoy them. And uh, when we do that, they send their love right back to us. It's so interesting and the beauty comes to us and, and everything is so perfect. It's, it's really interesting. But the plant kingdom, there was experiments actually done on uh, with galvanic responses. They would uh, hook electrodes up to these plants and they, they could get responses, like if they would cut a plant next to them, the other plant would respond to it. And it would respond in a negative, you know, just a horrified sort of response. Well, they found that you could take plants that were 50 miles away, 
cut them, destroy them, be mean to them, and plants 50 miles away would respond to that through a response that could be measured scientifically. Very fascinating. And so anything that happens to any plant on this earth is felt by the other plants. They're all interconnected. And believe it or not, whatever we do to plants also affects us. Because they, they hooked up not only the, the plants, but they hooked up a couple of human beings that were miles away, and they responded to the, to the destruction just like the plants did. And so we as humans are interconnected with our planet. It's quite interesting, when the movie Avatar came out, everybody just was like, whoa, amazed, and you know, like, Oh, this is something else. But the truth of the matter is, we're just like Avatar. We are connected to our planet. And in this movie, they depicted them being much more connected than we are, which actually, uh, anciently, we were as connected as, as they are. We could literally hook into the plants. We could hook into the earth, and we could uh, interchange energy that way. So a uh, fascinating movie. Now, uh, the animal kingdom. Uh, a watchmaker near Hamburg had his German shepherd confiscated for the war effort. And a year and a half later, the man was put into a concentration camp that was, and it was learned, when it was learned, he was a quarter Jewish. One night and three others escaped, which was discovered 30 minutes later by the guards who immediately released their dogs. One of those strange occurrences in life, the dog reached the escaped prisoners first was the watchmaker's dog that had been forcefully taken away and after all the training to attack prisoners what did the dog do after crossing the allied lines the men described what had happened he said his eyes met those of his dog and he felt a warmth in the back of his eyeballs the dog suddenly turned around and began attacking the other dogs which were behind him the men made their escape during the dogfight, the result of which no one knows. The watchmaker never knew or saw his German Shepherd again, but wow. can you imagine that connection between that German Shepherd and his, his owner who had loved him? Right. He actually helped him escape. <laughs> Isn't that an interesting story? So the, so the animals have that same interaction, but we've, you know, uh, I went over to Kanab to the, to the abused animal shelter over there. And it's interesting how these animals have had to undergo therapy, <laughs> literally therapy for their abuse. And as their love and the energy changes, they become much more docile and loving. But when they're first arrived, they're afraid and they're scared. And some of them are so angry, they attack the people. And, and so uh, our interactions with animals are very important. We need to take good care of our animals love them and they'll love us right back so um, okay let's go to page let's let's go to um, let's go to page seven which is uh, sight telepathy uh, sight is an interesting thing R currently the the media is using sight to control our thoughts and our thought forms through the media, through television, through movies, through all kinds of things. And human beings are very visual, uh, especially the male uh, part of the population is very visual and they uh, are very much affected by, by sight. And what's, what's interesting is uh, 300 years ago, modern science took a quantum leap. I'm just reading from this because I want you to get the message correctly. Uh, and took a quantum leap forward in understanding sight with the research and ideas of Des Descartes. The diagram used in part of this series shows his observations and how he believed the image was caught by the eyes, then sent from the optic nerve to the inside of the brain. He also believed the soul which sits inside the brain then watches these images from the little screens that are at the ends of the optic nerves. Now, visualization is a more powerful form of faith. Uh, 
our optic nerves that connect back to the, the occipital lobe are in the po uh, posterior part of the third eye. Now, as they travel through the brain, you know, De Socrates believed the soul resides in the brain, but the soul actually resides in the entire body, <laughs> the center of which is the heart chakra. And with this belief system, he believed that the soul would participate in those visual images, uh, which actually does happen, and the visualization creates an energetic thought form. So when you're watching TV, those images, and they're constantly, you know, there's like six per second to 20 per second, come in and they, they create these visual images in our auric body, in our mental body, in our visual body, and create thought forms. Now those thought forms are part of, see, if you, if visualization creates a more powerful faith, visualization can also create a more powerful opposite or fear even. And so uh, it's, I found it very interesting how people attend these uh, movies that are very uh, scary, uh, contain a lot of fear, contain a lot of destruction. Uh, quite frankly, even when I was a little child, I did not like watching scary movies. And yet there's people that get caught up in these things and they enjoy it and they uh, become a part of the energy of these, these uh, thought forms. And so when, when we talk about the sight telepathy, it, it's so important that we, that we continually offer our bodies good visual energy, good visual thought forms. And so uh, I found it, it's very helpful to turn off the TV and only watch happy movies that create good, good thought forms. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, Go ahead. So I was thinking that today, when you're raising vibrations, mm -hmm. I'm even more sensitive to music on the yes. radio. And yeah. it affects me like visually, like I almost cringe, like seeing things is that before it, it didn't like really affect me, but now I could never imagine going to like a horror movie. But yeah. They are vibrating very low, oh, and some yeah, music. Higher vibration, you're just like yeah, and music vibrates lower. And as you raise your vibration, you're more sensitive. Turn off the radio, even like yeah. a normal song. Because yeah. you'll feel that energy. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you can do to deal with it is go into a mode of non-judgment. In other words, we realize those energies are there but we don't allow them into our auric field. So you make a choice. You actually choose to uh, be able to observe this without it harming your... It feels like it hurts me. I don't know if that's... Yeah, your mental health. Yeah, like, oh, exactly. yeah, you put on a good point, and I've never thought of that, because yeah. it, over the years, I've been able to see things that I never would have ever thought of. Yes, exactly. I, I no longer can deal with it, so I had to find it, refuse it, yes. totally, but I've never thought of that. Yeah. So it's when you are subjected on occasion to certain Yeah, because things. we will be subjected right. to it. Yeah, a commercial time. comes up when you're watching a really decent something, and it starts to scare you when it's Yeah, it almost goes, whoa, yeah, what the heck? Have, and I so what you do that. is you create this barrier, this stealth energy, that none of the negative thought forms penetrate. Okay. And then you can actually observe it without the, the thought forms entering in and harming you. How do you do that? You create this barrier through your thoughts, okay, through your mental energy, through your clear knowing that those negative thought forms, anything vibrating, I always do it this way. I put out this field of energy that protects and reflects off anything that isn't for my greatest and highest good, which is the God true energy, the unconditional love. So in other words, I've literally put up this barrier 
And I could walk through one of the scummiest neighborhoods with people doing horrible things without it affecting me because I'm not feeding into it and I'm not judging it, but I'm in an observation. And the people around won't even see you. An example of this, Carolyn Mace talked about how when Rodney King uh, was, was put into jail, they had a huge uh, riot down in uh, West LA and, and uh, she just happened to be in a car that was passing through the area right at the time of the riot. And because she didn't, uh, that she's put up this barrier that doesn't allow any of these negative energies in, her car drove right through and all the cars around her were being turned over, lit on fire, people were busting in the windows and doing all kinds of stuff, every car around her. And yet they drove through without being touched. And I believe they drove through without the crowd even seeing them because they had put up this barrier that kept that energy away. And Carolyn uh, honestly said, I didn't know what was even going on because I wasn't even seeing what was going on because I don't see this kind of energy, this kind of riotous chaos. And we, we were talking with her at, at a bar in Israel, <laughs> four years ago. And this was where she told us this story. And uh, later, the, the woman who was sitting with her was like, you know, quite, quite afraid. And she asked Carolyn, how come you didn't get afraid? And Carolyn was like, I didn't even see what was going on. If you hadn't have told me, I don't feed into that reality at all. And so she didn't even hook into it. And so the people around didn't even hook into it. The people who were crashing the windows in and destroying the cars and turning them over, you know? So it, it's interesting how we can put a protection around us just by feeding into only the unconditional love. That's fascinating because I've never thought of it from that approach. Now I use the, the, the protection. protection and everything in, you know, I know I'm going into a scene, I automatically do that. Yeah. But I've never thought about it in, into the circumstances of other types of things. Yeah. Yeah, very powerful. Well, it like when I everybody in the car too. That's what I. Yeah, it protected well, everybody in the car. It protected everybody in the car because Carolyn just knew they were protected and they were fine. Yeah. And what's fascinating is people, you know, like we go to Peru and they always go, "Aren't you afraid to go to Peru?" And I'm like, I don't even go into that thought form of being afraid. You know, I I go with the intent to participate in spiritual good stuff and and I never even think about getting robbed or hurt or anything. You know, I never, I don't even feed into that energy. And so most of the time, everything goes fine. Now, it was really interesting. I brought some jewelry back from uh, Cusco. And as I was packing it, I, I think I did put this thought form in that, well, if, if they steal one, maybe they won't steal the other, you know? So I put it in two separate packages. Well, sure enough, they one. stole one, but they didn't steal the one that I really didn't want them to steal, which was interesting. So I came home and had the best stuff, but the other stuff got taken, which made me a little bit sad, but I, you know, you figure, ah, oh, they probably needed it more than I did anyway, so. So, uh, you know, we, we have these you thoughts. You that without thinking you were doing that. Yeah, That's and so. And, and the other interesting thing, we brought this uh, Agua, uh, Aguas Flores that's a very powerful clearing thing that's in a, in a kind of an alcohol oil base. And it's com combustible and you're not supposed to be able to travel with it. And they took it, as, uh, took it away from us. And I was actually kind of angry because I wanted to bring it home and use it you know, to help clear people. And uh, we got up to the counter and nobody would, uh, they wouldn't let us get on the plane because they'd oversold the flight. So uh, Vicki was especially angry because she wanted to get home with this Aguas Flores too because you know it cost us $30 to buy it. And so we, uh, we were going back out and I asked the guy if I could have it back and he looked at me and he, you know at first he was like, oh, have this stuff, you know, because we already took it from you. But he grabbed it and he gave it to me and walked me to the opening and took it out and we put it in 
Camille's luggage and it came home with us. But wow. the power of our creating the energy to keep that and bring it home was so powerful, it created a way that we could do that. And actually, it created an easier way because we were able to check the luggage clear through to Los Angeles. And it didn't even have to be checked in Lima, which, you know, they probably would have confiscated it. it again. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting how the universe will work for us if we create the energy. And the most powerful thing we can do is go into clear knowing and connect to what is real, what is, what is true. And when Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, the truth is you are free to create that energy. And it will always help you be free of any attachments, any problems, any things that, are, uh, that can create problems in your life, even disease. Disease is an actual lowering of your vibration through an emotional uh, through creating an emotional energy that's negative for your body and it creates energy that causes problems with your physical body. And a lot of people just feed into it and they believe they become that disease and when that happens, they are. That's who they are. And so... Well, the word is so descriptive. Yeah. Ease. Yeah. Yeah, ease comes from following truth and being one with the universe and universe in unconditional love. Whereas disease is disconnecting from yeah, that yeah. truth of perfection. Yeah. So it's very interesting. So I'm going to stop this.